Hey guys, it's Amy. Welcome back to my channel. So today I decided to do another Q&A video because it's been a while. First question by Jennifer Moran. Debating between the PM Boshet Mitsis when it's available and the Palm Springs Mini, which one would you recommend? For a long time, as you know, my favorite bag was the Boshet Mitsis and um, I've had that bag for years. I I've had it when it first came out and I've enjoyed it so much. I took it traveling and it was it was my main travel bag as well whenever I wanted to take a luxury bag with me. And it just, the compartments inside just made sense and it was just so easy to use. The negative side of this bag is that I feel like it's inedible of the cracking of the canvas, of the cracking of the glazing. I do think that most of us care about quality issues and wear and tear. I mean, of course I accept patina, of course I accept like, you know, it will look aged and all that stuff and that the hardware will scratch and all that stuff, that's all normal. But for canvas to crack within a few months, uh, for the glazing to peel off within a few months or within a, a handful number of use, and for even quality issues with just repairs, uh, I don't think that those things are that demanding to expect a, a higher level of standard. So, in that regard, I almost feel like that bag for me is 50-50 because if you've got a good one, then keep it, keep using it and love it. But if you're just trying to decide between a new one, between those two bags, I would actually pick the Palm Springs Mini now. And I'm not saying that the Palm Springs Mini doesn't have its own fault. Uh, at least I don't, I don't have major issues with it anyway. For the most part, I feel like everybody who has that bag loves it and there's a really, really good reason. And of course, they're totally, totally different. It's hard to describe until you have it. Basically, the way I, I would describe it is the squishiness. It's so easy to... It's so easy to use, it's so easy to pack, and yeah, it, it's it's kind of like a black hole, but it's a small black hole, so it's easier to manage, and uh, the way you wear it, just crossbody is my favorite, it's just so cool, and I don't care that it's a backpack, I just use it as a handbag anyway, and uh, it has become my travel bag, it has become my favorite all-time all year bag as well, so not only is it great for traveling, uh, for everyday use, um, it's actually really spacious for a small size bag like this and it actually has been quite hard wearing for me like I have some wear and tear on it but they're not terrible Jane De La Cruz Hi Amy, which do you prefer the LV scarf or the Burberry? In my Black Friday haul I got uh, a couple of Burberry scarves so this one is a uh, it's just a sheer gauze it's pretty long and uh, I love that it's kind of wide and uh, it's a wool blend, which uh, wool and cashmere blend, which I really, really like because it's uh, it's not only lightweight, it's very comfortable, it's soft enough, you know, it's not like the softest, but it's pretty soft. Uh, but I love that this style can be worn in the winter and the summer because we don't have super hot summers here in Vancouver. So for me, I think something like this is an all year round item. And so um, you guys all know how the LV shawl looks like already. And I have a whole video just about my LV shawl. Even though it's an older video, I will link it down below. Between those two, if you were just to pick one scarf and you don't have any... Um, I personally think that you should start with the Burberry and I feel like if I was told that before I would have been super happy with the Burberry just because I feel like the material itself uh, even though I haven't had it for that long but I feel like the material itself um, is is easier to manage I feel like it's it's lightweight enough and also substantial enough for all all year round wear uh, like the LV one is great too, but it gets kind of bulky It's a good thing if that's the look that you're going for because like the oversized look is definitely in The luxuriousness of the LV shawl is is definitely, you know, a thing to lust for But I think in terms of practicality if you're like me, um, I like something that's practical all year round Not fussy and also price point is better too I would go with the Burberry. Next question is by Zep K. Amy, I'm thinking of either getting the World Tour Never Full like yours or the LV Neo Vivian. I feel that the Vivian will be used more as the other bag would be more of a travel purpose. What are your views regarding the Vivian? I know that the Vivian is made of bull leather, not calf skin, uh, although they're quite similar in, in, um, in texture, but bull I think is even 
thicker and more hardy if that makes sense so it's it feels like a very very sturdy bag and it feels like it will last you a lifetime as well so because they're so different like you said the neverfull is definitely more of a travel bag slash on days that you want to wear a tote i really like it i i think that the size is great it's not too too small so the quality of the leather is great uh the style is really really cute uh, it's very versatile you can definitely just make do with that one bag for lots of occasion uh, now in terms of the size i think it's a pretty good size it's not too small it's not too big uh, but it's definitely leaning more towards the small size there's a lot to love about the Vivian the only thing I don't love is the price uh, I do think that it's very pricey although I know that it is justified by the fact that it's a different design it's a higher end bag they use the Dorion leather I feel like it's on the same level as their Capucine line uh, but at the same time it's um, less expensive than their capucine. I don't know if in the end you got it or not, but I, I definitely love the bag. I think if I were to have money to spend and I just want to add something, I would definitely get it because it is really, really nice. Next question is by SK. Hi, Amy. With another price increase, Chanel is getting ridiculous. Do you think that you would ever think this is too much and stop purchasing the brand? Everything is supply and demand and I feel like with Chanel, their demand is always going to be there. I do feel that with prices increasing every year uh, and with people sort of knowing and expecting it to happen, it's something that we all inherently kind of accept in a sense. Uh, especially for handbags, I feel I don't know why. For anything else, I feel like we're always pinching and trying to save here and there. But for some reason with handbags, especially with really good luxury handbags such as Chanel, LV and Hermes, I feel like we just kind of expect it and complain a little bit about it, but we accept it and we just move on and then still keep buying it. I feel like this is probably what most people would end up doing. Of course, there's always going to be some people who will think it's too much. I just set myself like a limit in terms of price range. Uh, for example, the classics are just too ridiculously expensive. We're talking about $7,000 $7, and up for a classic Chanel flap, which is just ridiculous. It's something that I can't... I, I can't make myself do it at the moment. From that point of view, I will not buy retail. But for any other styles that are below that value or a lot below that value or half of that value, I'm still open to the idea of, you know, getting those. I feel like the Chanel classic flaps are in their own bubble and it's not gonna burst. The next question is by Becky Panda. Hi, Amy. I'm very interested in getting the Neverfull World Tour, but can you tell me if the black straps are getting softer, very scared that it would dig into my shoulder like I heard about the Damier Ben. So this is my world tour never fall and she's asking about the trim of the leather on it. It is softer. Like it's hard to explain. I even though this is a treated leather, you would think that it's the same as the Damier Ben leather, but it is not. I feel that the Damier Ben is just it's hard to describe it, but I feel like the Damier Ben is crispier, if that makes sense. It feels like the edge, uh, you know, the way they cut it and after they glaze it, it feels, it feels more, like it cuts more. I, I, I don't know how to describe the difference, but even though this leather is treated and it's cut the same way and it's the same bag, um, this is different. This, this leather feels softer it is still it is still solid and it is still treated so it, it won't patina or anything but it feels softer for some reason and because i've only had it for a month and it's already softened up a little bit i feel that it's only gonna get even softer and more comfortable and i feel very comfortable wearing it um you know even just right now with a very thin t top with not that many layers um Obviously, my Vachetta one is still going to be more comfortable, but I feel like this is such a great sort of compromise in between the two different styles, Demi Ben and this, if you're going for something that doesn't age or anything. So I really, really love this. Uh, and yeah, I highly recommend it. I, I love mine so much. The next question is by Yasmina D. Hi, sweetie. I always see your comments. I've been eyeing the Pochette Mises for a while now, but I am scared to get on the endless waiting list only to be disappointed 
There are so many YouTubers complaining about the never-ending issues. Did you ever come across any other bags that would be similar to the Pershemitsis? Practicality-wise, it's the best bag out there. No questions about it. Um, so I do miss it. I'm hopeful only because I know LV always comes up with new bags. So I, I hope that it's a matter of time that it will, they will have another bag that can sort of replace the push emphasis or at least be another option to choose from um i know that i saw recently on uh foxy lv's video that uh they are gonna probably come up with the it's called the chantilly i think uh and which is basically a revamp of an uh older style there isn't a lot of details to go from because she only has that one picture on her video but uh, that one looks very appealing to me and uh, it is all canvas with some leather trims and i'm really excited about that i think it comes with black and white leather trim i think the white leather trim is with the reverse canvas which is awesome as well so that's an option to maybe wait for to see what Alvi comes up with. The next question is by Yanzi Jin. Hi Amy, I saw your YouTube video on the LV Noe but still can't make up my mind. Uh, what do you think about that bag? I did like the bag a lot. Um, I didn't, I felt like it wasn't bulky even though I, in my mind, I was thinking about my Pitsy Noe that I had in the past and that one is definitely a little bit more bulky but it wasn't terrible, it was just more bulky than the Neo Noe. The middle zipper compartment does give a sense of more compartmentalization for the bag. I love the Argentera lining, that's definitely always a plus for me. I didn't care so much about the strap being uh, adjustable to a longer setting only because uh, it would be really really long for most people I think unless you're taller. Um, it's actually quite long and it um, doesn't look as good in my opinion anyway. I feel like anytime you wear crossbody bags, uh, the smaller it is, the, the better it looks in my opinion. All in all, I really like the bag. Not enough to buy it only because uh, when I reach for a bigger bag, like I said all the time, I would just go for my Neverfull. The Neverfull is still my all-time favorite bigger bag. Um, so for me, in terms of functionality, they're too similar. In fact, the Neverfull fits way more, so I actually do prefer that. Hello, Mackie. Love your reviews as always. Would love to know the clear case behind you. Where did you get it? It's so cute. So yeah, this case I actually found at Marshalls. And it was only $27.99, I think, or $24.99 plus tax, so it was like $27. And it's made of glass, and this is a gold tone metal. It's kind of like a, um, sort of like an antique gold color. And so yeah, there's a few compartments. Like you can see, there's a bigger one here, small one, small one, and then the bottom is just like that. And then this one is mirror, like this surface is mirror actually. And so yeah, I I saw it and I had to get it because I always wanted something in this color like gold and also just clear. I just love anything clear and gold and I, uh, you know, it, it matches sort of like the doorknobs. Once I'm done with the video, I'm gonna try to look at the label underneath it to see if I can find the brand and a, a link for you guys so I can link it down below. But I can't guarantee anything just because you know how it works at Marshalls. You can't always find uh, those things all the time. They come and go, so once they're gone, they're gone. So I'm gonna try my best to see if I can see the brand name on this and put the link down below. Um, but if not, I'll, I'll still try to maybe look for an alternative for you guys. I'm not sure that I can find the exact same one, but I'll, I'll do my best. The next question is by Nika. Hello, Nika. She has her own channel, by the way. What do you think about the Chanel pouches and clutches? Do you think they are a good option? And the best way for me to answer it is that for me personally, in order to work as a clutch um, or, or even any sort of bags that I use in, in the nighttime, I prefer something that has a, a strap, either a so shoulder strap or a detachable strap of any sort. So I know right off the bat that an old case would probably not work for me. My content in it will get heavy or it will easily slip off my hands or whatever. Uh, and I'm not a clumsy person, that's not, a, that's not why I'm saying that, but it's just a, a matter of convenience and it does get heavy for me because I do have arthritis. 
so it's not the best option for me sure i do have one clutch and it's the dior vintage one but because it's vintage and i got it for a really good deal so that doesn't matter but if i were to invest in an old case like a chanel old case like those bigger ones thousand dollar range for me that wouldn't be worth it and that would be the same for an actual chanel clutch because i know that the actual chanel clutch would probably cl be closer to two or three thousand dollars and because it's not as practical for me and because i probably won't be using it as much just because how many times can you carry a clutch unless you have a lot of formal events to go to uh, then i personally don't find them as useful i would rather just buy a mini handbag with a crossbody strap or with some sort of detachable straps where i know that i can just use it for multi-purpose as well so not only for nighttime use but also for daytime use next question is by viva vista mac hi amy i'm considering purchasing this marmot velvet flat bag in the mini size either in blue or fuchsia but do you think that this is a trendy piece as in something that will go out of style soon definitely feels more trendy to me just because it's gucci now having said that i do feel that the the shape of the bag itself and even the material velvet is always going to be a um, material that is going to be used time and time uh every year because it's it's a very fall and winter ish material so in that regard i don't think it will kind of go out of style because it is a flap sort of closure i do feel that it's it's still kind of timeless in that way uh, not necessarily the quilting or like the gg design but in terms of the actual flat bag design i think it is kind of timeless and classic but at the end of the day i feel like we should always buy things that we love regardless of how timeless they're perceived to be or uh, how much they keep their value think about whether you love that bag regardless and uh, I feel like sometimes that's more important than trying to always buy the most timeless and most classic bags out there the next question is by Stephanie Chan uh, how would you compare the mini Fendi Peekaboo and the Alma BB the Peekaboo B mini does fit a lot more in my opinion uh, simply because you can use it open uh, you don't necessarily have the close the closure there also it's so much easier to take things in and out of it um, so yeah the ease of use the practicality uh, the space and also just the style uh, how timeless and how great this bag is I personally prefer it the Alma BB on the other hand is still a great bag I did sell mine because of a couple reasons but uh, it's a very spacious bag for a small bag and uh, it's obviously still an iconic, the, one of the most iconic bag from LV as well. And I think of all the sizes from the Alma range, the Alma BB is the one to invest in if, if you're one to like it. Um, I personally had a couple things that uh, kind of bugged me after a while. Uh, the fact that the zipper was a dome shape. It was not always working with the stuff that I put in it. Uh, simply because I have quite a few bulkier stuff that are more... Sort of different shape then it would just kind of bulge out from different sides and i didn't really like that unless i left my bag open um, but i find that the alma bb looks best when it's closed essentially that was the issue for me but i do find that the alma bb is still very affordable compared to the picket boo mini obviously uh, and also uh, it, as a handheld bag it's actually really really cute i tend to prefer bags that have less zipper closures or if it has a zipper closure it better be a straight one and easy to open and not something that will get in my way of getting in and out of the out of the bag uh just because i have a pet peeve with that or rachel andrea hi amy i'm a new subby to your channel and i just finished watching your luxury europe haul from last summer you mentioned that you only packed your carry-on and a personal item and i was wondering if you could please do a video explaining how you did that like what you pack i'm gonna be going to europe for about three weeks and it would be extremely helpful because i want to leave with only my carry-on and backpack because i know i'll be doing a lot of shopping and will probably have to end up checking in one luggage on my way back i actually filmed my unpacking of my luggage when i came back from europe and i just haven't gone through all the editing of my vlogs so i probably never showed what i packed but if i can find that footage i'll just put it on the screen so you can see it but basically just to walk you through um exactly what i packed 
or at least as far as I remember anyway. Um, okay, first of all, you have to consider which season you're traveling to Europe because we were there in the middle of summer and it was going to be hot. And so we knew right off the bat that we can get away with a lot less because if you're going in the winter or in the fall, then you would need a lot more layers and you'll need thicker coats and socks and things like that. And so it might not be possible to just uh, get away with your carry-on. You might still be able to do it, but you'll have to be super minimal. I had enough underwear for at least like two weeks. So for female, it's a lot easier because uh, female underwear is a, is a lot less fabric than men, men's underwear. And I only brought like a couple pairs of socks because uh, I wore sandals a lot. In terms of everyday outfits, that was the probably the trickiest part. But because it was in the middle of summer and I'm a girl, so I just brought dresses. I think I brought five dresses. I just rotate them basically week after week. And even though we were there for a whole three weeks as well, we were able to do laundry in the middle of our trip, which was when we went onto our cruise. I also brought, I think, a couple t-shirts, one pair of shorts, and then um, the only jacket that I had on was the one that I was wearing uh, to go on the plane. I tried to wear all my thickest and heaviest layers on me while I'm in transit and everything else was packed away. And the way I packed, I don't know if you guys have heard about the Con Mary way, but she basically rolls everything. By rolling everything in your luggage, you really take advantage of all the nooks and crannies inside your luggage and not leave out any, any space at all in it. So that was how I packed. And then in terms of uh, toiletries, we brought everything travel size, obviously. And I think we probably tried to use up everything and just uh, throw away any empty containers that was finished um, on our way back. So that kind of emptied out some space as well for anything that we bought. Aside from my carry-on, I also brought my Longchamp large tote. I didn't bring any laptops. I didn't bring any anything like that except my camera and my phone. Um, I brought a backpack, but it was a nylon backpack, so it was like easily stowed away. I also brought my mini palm spring as my only luxury handbag that I used, but that I just put it inside my Longchamp and I had it with me the whole time. So anything valuable, of course, you want to keep it close to you. I made a few purchases, there weren't that too, too many. I did buy my Speedy there, I bought some earrings, I bought um, a few smaller things. Oh, I bought a, a LV shawl. So that was about it. So I was able to put all of that, stuff all of that inside the my tote. And all the packaging, I just um, deflated everything and then I was able to actually put it inside my luggage because everything was deflated and I was able to just stuff everything in and when I when I mean when I say stuff I mean stuff like y you literally have to do your best at rolling and at taking advantage of all the little space in there but that's okay because when you come home you don't really care how your things are packed inside your luggage anyway it doesn't have to be you know wrinkle free and all that stuff so I just stuffed it as much as I can and that way we not only save money for not having to check in luggage but also uh, it was just a lot easier and a lot lighter to travel around because we did go to many many cities around Europe uh, during our stay. If we went to just one or two cities then maybe it wouldn't be too bad to bring along a bigger luggage but uh, we, we just wanted to be mobile and it worked out super well for us. I have one more question and this question is not related to handbags, not related to fashion. Uh, it's a little bit more personal so I won't mention the name. Uh, she says, I have many kinds of chronic pain, one being arthritis. How were you on your trip? Were you able to keep the pain under control? I worry about trips requiring a lot of walking. Anytime I get uh, comments or questions regarding more personal, um, how do you call it, just just something more deep and personal, I also really really appreciate it because I know you guys feel me and understand me and I obviously totally understand what you're going through as well. Every time I travel, it's never been easy no matter how short or long the trip is especially for longer trips and especially for uh, trips where there's a lot of walking like you said because there's different kinds of trips when we go to Hawaii we rent a car and you know it's pretty comfortable we usually rent a condo as well so it's 
it's almost like home it's just a home away from home but on trips where you have to walk a lot and there's no way around uh you can't just easily get get back home um it's 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 a lot tougher and especially you want to cover as much attractions as possible i even talked about it in my vlog in my your in my london vlog that um i had so much pain i was limping the whole time and we started in london so my symptoms appeared uh, on the first day in london uh and it persisted until um it, it was basically the whole trip but i just had to manage it and it wasn't pretty and it wasn't funny and in fact i always felt that i'm dragging everybody else that was traveling with me and it's it's the worst feeling to have and the way i manage it is that i have to skip some attractions there were some places where they went that i totally skipped uh, a lot of times i skip dinners because uh, it's been a long day for me and i just i can't do it all so i just skip dinner uh, and my husband would just bring back some food for me after they've eaten uh, and I, I would just stay and rest at the hotel as much as possible and even then it, the next day it's not like I completely healed because uh, when you have chronic inflammation it doesn't go away by itself right you um, you just try to do what you can and avoid what you can't and even then it's not going to be easy we went to london and paris on our own so we just toured on our own so it was easier for me to just decide what to do and what to skip but during our cruise we also of course booked some tours and on a tour you can't just decide to go home you're in with a group and you have to do the whole thing so basically uh, for the tours on the days that we knew we had tours I made sure to rest up the whole day before that or rest up whenever I can uh, and it was easy and hard at the same time it was easier because uh, on on the ship on on days that you're just at sea you can just stay in your hotel room the whole time and it doesn't matter because they can just go on and enjoy whatever other things that's going on in the ship but on the day of the tours I just had to manage my pain with also extra medication so i had ibuprofen on hand uh, i would take one at the beginning with breakfast and i would go about my you know my day in the morning with with the tour and if i start feeling a little bit more pain then i would take another one during uh during lunch or in the afternoon and um that kind of helped with the tours uh, and also we picked tours that were not super intense it was kind of like moderate or easy but uh, when it says easy it still can be a long day right so I just managed it that way by knowing and expecting that the next day was going to be a harder and longer day so I had medication with me and I also tried to rest up as much as possible the day before um, and yeah it's just a lot about managing expectations actually it just means that you have to accept that sometimes you can't do it all and that's just a new normal for me or for people like me uh it's it, you, you can't possibly do it all an even bigger challenge for people with disabilities is not just themselves with their limitations but also to um not make people around you understand but also you know that people around you will not completely understand what you're going through and even if they understand uh hopefully they will be as accepting as well the circumstances and the different um changes in your life that uh you need to go through um and of course it not only affects you but it affects them too right? that's basically how i manage things and uh, I don't want to just stop traveling or stop doing things just because I have this condition because I can stop my life for any reason, right? Like this is not going to stop me from doing what I have always loved to do, which is to travel, to see the world. And uh, it, it's just, you, you just have to make some changes and some compromises here and there. And it's not going to be fun all the time, uh, but you make do with what you have and uh, you make it work somehow. So uh, I totally, totally understand what you're going through and uh, w what I can offer or what I can just say from personal experience is never stop trying. Um, it's going to be hard nevertheless. Uh, it's just easier if you didn't have any condition, but it's going to be uh, hard for people like us. And uh, 
I don't think that should stop us from trying new things and from seeing the world and from traveling more and from doing whatever you feel like doing. Uh, you should definitely still do those things and just make small adjustments here and there. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I talked so much and my my whole mouth and throat is parched. Definitely leave me down below in the comments any questions, any more questions you want me to cover in my next Q&A. So that's it for today. I hope you guys are doing well. And if you're new to my channel, thanks for dropping by. I uh, hope you'll subscribe and I'll talk to you guys very soon again. Bye.